we all know how frustrating it can be when your phone runs out to battery or your laptop charges uh, reaches 1% and you've forgotten your power cable. It stops you from being able to check your emails, stops you from jumping onto Slack, stops you from making phone calls with your clients. It prevents you from getting your work done. So we always remember to pat the power cable. We remember to charge our phone overnight so we're able to keep on working tomorrow. Now you might think that your laptop is probably one of the most important assets in your business, but the reality is that the most important asset in your business above anything else is you. And taking care of you is a critical business task when you're self-employed. Hello, I'm Matthew Knight. I'm an independent strategist and I work with my clients to help them figure out what's next. But I also spend around 30% of my time supporting fellow freelancers. For the last seven years, I ran an award-winning project which focused on the mental health of the self-employed, where we helped over 250,000 freelancers understand the importance of taking care of themselves when self-employed. And I'm currently working on a new project called Freelancing Support, which is an impartial guide to independent work. I also sit on Mind UK's Leadership Council on Mental Health at Work, and I've personally struggled with mental health challenges over my career. But thinking about mental health isn't only for people who struggle with poor mental health. And today on World Mental Health Day, I want to talk to you about why mental health for the self-employed matters so much. We're going to cover what mental health is, why it matters so much more when you're self-employed, some of the common influences on mental health, and importantly, some practical suggestions around taking care of your own mental health. But first, let's be clear on what mental health is. Mental health isn't mental illness. and uh, It doesn't just mean poor mental health. Everyone has mental health, just like physical health. Some of us are more mentally healthy. Some of us are less mentally healthy. healthy. And just like physical health, it can improve and decline over time. Just like physical health, it can be influenced by a wide range of things, some of which we're in control over, some less so. And just like physical health, the more proactive effort we put into taking care of ourselves, the more likely we'll be to stay healthy. And in fact, physical health and mental health are completely intertwined. So if you're sleeping well, you're eating well, if you're exercising regularly, you're putting in some great foundations for your mental health. But unlike physical health, mental health is almost the sum of all the things that are happening around us and to us. So external factors like what's happening in the news, our relationships, our bank balance, our work, obviously, they all have an effect on our mental health. Good mental health means that you have the ability to cope well with whatever life is throwing in your way. And poorer mental health might mean that you can find it harder to deal with some of those things. Ongoing poorer mental health can even lead to more serious mental health conditions like depression, anxiety disorders and other psychiatric illnesses. So it's really important to keep on top of our own mental health. And in the UK, around one in four people experience mental health issues annually. And research suggests that between 70 and 80 percent of people may experience periods of, of generalised poor mental health at some point in their lives. And at work, it's estimated that between 30 to 60% of people will experience burnout in their career. So even if you don't think that poor mental health is an issue that's affecting you right now, being proactive and investing in your mental health to avoid poorer mental health is a great strategy. But that's generally speaking, let's have a look specifically at the self-employed and in particular freelancers. And this image here is, I typed into ChatGBT, show me a freelancer and this is for some reason this is what chat gpt thinks a freelancer looks like um when you're working for yourself you as a freelancer face a unique set of challenges that most employees don't we generally do everything ourselves we're doing the work we're finding the work we're doing the accounts we're chasing the invoices we're paying the bills we're doing the marketing we're dealing with clients emails and requests and often chasing clients who aren't replying to emails and requests but there's no one else looking out for you. There's no HR team. There's no manager checking in on you. And oftentimes we might be working alone from home and not have anybody, anybody asking, how are you doing? We, we take on the stresses of having to hit our monthly income, the horrible feeling when you don't have any work coming in, the, the worry when a project cancel is, is cancelled, and even the worry when there's too much work. Oh, but you can take a limited holiday, as our non-freelance friends shout when we complain about feeling stressed. But as you may well know, even taking time off can add to stress. Having to turn down work or 
worrying about if a client's emailing you whilst you're away. When you're self-employed, it can be truly hard to truly to you know hard to truly switch off. And in many ways, you're always at work, either emotionally or sometimes physically, for for those of us who only work from home. And then there's the issue of feeling isolated because we don't have a team around us, because we're having to take on all the challenges ourselves, and because when we talk to our non-freelance friends, they don't really get it. Our recent research shows that the most significant stresses of the self-employed are probably quite something you you may well recognise. Number one is irregularity of income. I think something that we all all recognise. Forty percent of our community said that the irregularity of income related to self-employment causes them significant stress. And that concern is even higher for those in the first few years of self-employment at 51%. Number two is feeling unproductive. 30, 32% of our community said that feeling unproductive created some sort of significant anxiety or, or stress, and that affected 80% of people at some level. The third was a feeling of lack of confidence. 31% of the community said that a feeling of lack of confidence has caused them some significant anxiety or stress. A number as high as 80% when you ask any level of stress. Number four was that feeling of being isolated or disconnected. And after a regular income, feelings of isolation are the most commonly understood myth about freelancing. Uh, but unfortunately, it, it is for many not a myth. Whilst only about a third have said it caused them significant stress, around 70% of freelancers have reported feelings of isolation or disconnection at some times. And of course, being able to unable to find work or, or projects, almost 30% have experienced significant stress or anxiety because of that. Around 70% of us feel stress related to being unable to find work. But you know, every individual is different, so every freelancer will find a unique set of challenges which they might face. So it's really important to engage with your own circumstances and to build up a sense of what might affect you. And we'll come on to that shortly. But first, let's talk briefly about why all of this matters more when you're self-employed. I mean, there might be those of you who are thinking, oh, so what? We all get stressed. Just, just deal with it. Crack on. But as you know, when you're self-employed, there are no sick days. And if you're not keeping on top of your mental health, things can very easily stack up to the point that you're unable to work. In fact, from our research, 41% of our cohort said that at some point they were unable to work due to stress, anxiety, or poor mental health. Let's just read that again. Almost 50% of our research group said they were unable to work because of poor mental health at some point. And here's the most important point that I want to make. If you're unable to work, you don't have a you don't have a, a business. It doesn't matter how many clients you are uh, or that you have, how much turnover you're making, how amazing your LinkedIn content strategy is. If your mental health prevents you from working, that's a dangerous place to be. So taking care of your mental health at work for me is the missing chapter in your business plan. In the same way that you'll have targets for your income, for the types of work you want to be doing, for the marketing you have planned, for the money you put aside for your taxes, mental health should be an equally important part of how you run your freelancing business. So let's have a look at some of the practical suggestions for how to take care of yourself when you're freelancing. And hopefully it's as simple as ABC. A is active awareness of your mental health. B is building behaviours and boundaries. And C is about connecting to a community and support networks. So active awareness, this is all about taking time to check in with yourself regularly and literally putting mental health on your calendar. Start with just 15 minutes a week where you ask, how did I feel this week and why? Taking that time to reflect over the week, taking notes on how you were feeling, the highs and the lows, and trying to identify the source of those feelings. So for instance, did you have a great Monday because you had some really positive feedback from a client, but maybe a bad Tuesday because you were working really late after a deadline got moved? Maybe you had a great Wednesday where you sent an invoice for a completed project, but on Thursday you felt bad because you had to chase an overdue invoice. Just these 15 minutes a week will help you set a habit of reflecting on whether you're doing okay. And over time you'll start to see patterns. Are you generally having good weeks or bad weeks? Are the bad weeks getting more common or is there an upward trend that you're starting to feel better? 
Or is there a situation which you find yourself in on a regular basis or something that happens frequently, which is having a negative effect on how you feel? Keeping track of how you're doing over time helps you to be more aware of what's causing stress and that helps you move on to the next step, which is building behaviours and boundaries. Now, there's a whole load of things which you can put into place to take care of yourself. We're going to run through just a couple of them here, but there's a downloadable guide on freelancing support, which I'll signpost you to at the end. But building behaviours and boundaries is all about the small little shifts in how you work to support your mental health. For instance, adding a little bit of structure to your day. Structure can really help you create a clear boundary between what between when you're working and when you're not working. So it's easier to feel like you've done enough work for the day and now you're allowed to rest. It's very easy to swap the nine to five for 24 seven if you're not giving yourself some structure. Another behavior change might be putting a holiday policy in place. When you're employed, you get a number of days that you're allowed to take off and they just kind of count down over time. But when you're self-employed, giving yourself a minimum number of days that you are having to take off over the course of the year forces you to take a bit of a rest and properly switch off. Another example might be creating a red flag checklist. What are the common red flags that you see when you're engaging a new client that when you see them happen on a new project, you can take a moment to check in with yourself, step back and say, is this the right project for me or is this gonna cause some damage to my mental health? Another example might be automation. For example, putting automated emails which chase your late, playing, late paying clients. So you're not having to deal with that awkward feeling of asking to get paid. Now, whilst late payments don't feel like a mental health issue, they do lead to an impact on your mental health. So putting things in place to remove the negative impacts on your mental health is just as valuable. There are lots of small behavior changes which you can put in place. Some are really practical things as we've just seen here as structures or checklists. Other things are more to support your emotional experience of freelancing. As you saw, a top stressor is a lack of self-confidence. So you can add in small behaviors to help you build that confidence over time. Remember the journaling that we suggested every 15 minutes to reflect on how you're feeling? Well, you can add a few extra notes to that journal, perhaps a little wins column where you capture all of the small steps forward that you're making in your business, as well as bigger successes like winning a new project or positive feedback from clients. You'll start to build up a book of evidence which shows you all the great work that you're doing. And even on those days where you're feeling a lack of confidence, you've got that long list of proof that you're doing okay. Feedback, it's another brilliant tool for supporting your emotional well-being. It can be hard to know how we're doing unless we're actively asking for post-project feedback and follow-ups. So another behavior which you can add is getting to the habit of always gathering feedback and following up after a project, which again, you can use to build your portfolio. There are hundreds of small behaviors and little changes which you can put in place, and it's not something you should aim to do overnight, but rather just maybe one new idea every couple of months to slowly, steadily build up your practice for improving your mental health at work, based upon those patterns that you've spotted from checking in with yourself every week. And once you've implemented those new behaviors, you can see if they're having a positive impact by continuing to check in with yourself every week. Now, I understand that this could feel like we're adding to your to-do list and whilst our research shows it is really worthwhile doing, doing all of this on your own can still be really challenging. So this is where we come on to the third part, C, community and support networks. And in many ways, this is probably the most important. Working for yourself doesn't have to mean working by yourself. In fact, one of the most important tools to help take care of your mental health at work is by investing in building a community and a support network around you. Trying to tackle every issue, every question, every hurdle on your own is a surefire way to burn out and you cannot nor should not be aiming to be entirely self-reliant. Being parts of communities or of fellow freelancers can, can hugely help on a number of fronts to ask questions and learn from others. So if you've got a challenge, you can see how others approached it and it can help you deal with some of those problems faster to recognize it's not just you. There are so many things in freelancing which are just part of how it works that seeing others face the same challenges or similar challenges can help you realize it's not you doing something wrong. Perhaps this is just how freelancing work. 
it helps you discover things you didn't know that you needed to know. There are lots of questions which you might see asked by others that you had no idea that you needed to ask too. Or just to say hello, just the small micro interactions with others, checking on, checking in on each other, supporting each other, complaining about a client, talking about your favorite biscuits. The very human need that we all have for connection can be provided by community. Community doesn't have to mean something online. You can build your community offline too, but having fellow freelancers around you who understand the experience really helps. On those days when it's just too much, being able to have a few people who you can turn to, who you trust will understand what you're dealing with, who can offer a few simple moments to listen can be the difference between being able to cope or not. We've got our whole list of freelance friendly communities over at Freelancing Support, which you can browse and discover places and spaces that might be helpful to you. In this few handful of minutes we've had together, I can only hope to cover so much but I want to try and leave you with this thought. Freelancing is a wonderful way of working and our research shows that actually 85% of those new to freelancing said it had a positive benefit on their mental health, but it takes effort. And two thirds of our research group also felt they didn't have adequate support for their mental health at work or know where to find it. So don't leave thinking about your mental health at work until you feel your mental health is starting to get bad. Remember ABC, actively aware. Put in those 15 minutes a week to be more actively aware of your mental health. B, build those behaviours and boundaries to protect and invest in your mental health. And C, connect with your community and build a support network so you've got those people around you for the bad days and for the good days and so you can support each other. We're building a large set of impartial resources, guides and signposting plenty more about mental health over at Freelancing Support, along with a program to support first-time freelancers and tools to create your own mental health plan. So please do come over, say hello. I'll keep you posted on new content, which we're publishing every week. And remember, it all starts with just taking 15 minutes to check in and ask yourself, how are you doing?